Welcome to a somewhat blustery Eden Gardens um, and today we're going to address a few um, questions that we, we frequently have, things that people are a little bit concerned about, think that they need to call in the experts or it's all too hard, um, whereas in fact I'm going to just show you how easy these things are. Um, first things first, bare roots, these are the ones you find you know, dressed up in the, the little bags. Um, what on earth do you do with that? How do you plant it? This tree um, has grown in a paddock for the last uh, year or so and it's recently been dug up, leaving about 50% or more of its roots in the ground. Okay, and to plant this, we need to do something a little bit brutal to start with. Um, as per the instructions, you need to cut off about 50% of the tree. Why on earth are you doing that? Well, because we've left so much behind, we just need to kind of balance up the tree. Um, it seems, it does seem very brutal, but um, the reality is that this, this tree will shoot away um, and shoot away better by, by having it cut off. The reason they leave this on is to kind of protect the, this whole area, you know, whilst it's in transit waiting to be planted. So, um, with no further ado, we'll just do a quick snip here. Cutting above a node. Okay. And you really need a, a sharp pair of clean secateurs, and that is about it. Okay. All right. And next, we're actually going to plant this. This chap. Now this soil here, um, I have dug over and I've put in a little bit of, of um, garden mate, uh, which is some fantastic rock minerals um, with, with all of the microbes that, and, and microfauna that bring that into soil solution. And so we're just going to dig a little hole, my trusty spade. Okay, the hole is going to be about um, one and a half times the size of that root ball. There we go. And then pop him in here. And we're just going to do it that way around. Okay. And and around the. Thing, we're going to actually make a little bit of a bowl, which is where we're going to apply some complete fertilizer. I'm using the, the fruit blend. Okay, and then bucket of water, H2O, directly from Sydney water, and that's just to get him started. Each fortnight until Christmas we do the same and that will get this guy off to a great start. Okay, so we've planted our bare root. We'll come back to him in a minute because we're going to do a bit of a spallier. Okay, now spallier, you don't, is the art of growing plants flat against walls and it really does look very beautiful. It's an ancient craft, been, been done for literally thousands of years. Um, you know, the Romans did it, um, the royal families of Europe certainly did a lot of it, the, the French really got into it. Um, so, and uh, hence the term espalier is actually a French term or a French word but the, the original word was a uh, uh, Italian spalier I think could be wrong uh, Spanish or, or Italian but but essentially it meant resting your shoulder against something and it actually referred to the structure that they actually grew the things on but now it actually means the you know the forming a tree in this way so um, people think this is really complicated, but in fact, it's not. It's 
easy, it's very, very space efficient, um, and it does look beautiful as well. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've got three different types of deciduous trees here. Um, so I've got, a, I've got apple trees. So, so actually, it's a, sorry, it's a, uh, uh, sorry, an Asian pear, rather, an Asian pear, a Nashi pear, okay? Um, and these, these guys are famous for us because they are incredibly flexible. Um, now, I've, I have just sort of rigged this um, assembly up just to give you the idea. But at home, and the easiest way to kind of do it and to, is just straining some wires between some fence, fence posts. You want the, the tree to be probably proud of the, of the fence by about 10 or 15 centimetres, get a bit of airflow going on. But just a simple turnbuckle, which sort of tightens there, a piece of wire, and I just normally use these kind of fencing, no, sorry, um, roofing nails, roofing screws, so they just sort of stick out a little bit, and then I hook one end around there, and then just um, to attach the turnbuckle to the other side, and then you just t you know get get some tension on. Um, but we're sort of simulating it here. So with the so this is a lovely um, double. Um, double grafted um, Nashi pear. So it's actually got two varieties. One, um, they pollinate each other, but one uh, ripens before the other, so you get a longer harvest. And with this, because I've got the, I've actually got the, um, the graft down here. I don't want to put too much pressure on the graft, but essentially what I'm going to do is I will tie it off here, and I, I use this, you could use, you know, um, old stockies if you want to but this is a, a, a lovely kind of um, very very soft thing so you're not gonna, you're never gonna um, uh, strangle the the wood I would sort of tie it on here and then look to then tie that and I'll tie that about here okay um, these guys in the middle I would allow, allow to grow up and I will actually do them on a on a probably a a, um, a wire at about that height, but I let those grow for a, for a little while. Um, and the apples and pears actually develop these little, little side, look like little side branches, very, very, uh, this sort of thing here, um, on which they have, um, that's where they get their fruit buds. And um, so they they work by having these, these um, what they call spurs and the main thing that you do is you kind of thin those out occasionally but um, so they grow on spurs um, and they they really suit this kind of the the tear effect which is you know like horizontal and then you'll have another one of another one above it um, you know year by year probably two or three tiers is, is what looks really nice now moving across to the the fig. Fig is my is actually my favourite, um, and with the fig, what we do, um, or, or the method that I use, is actually to bring these down to to a horizontal, like that. Um, I pick two um, two branches that are that are, are basically roughly in line with each other. They don't have to be, you know absolutely bang next to each other because as it matures um, you end up with a big sort of crossbar I normally let them grow about a meter that way and a meter that way at the moment this year what I will do with this this tree is actually just allow these two branches to develop but I don't want too many other distractions so I'll actually remove that I'll remove that and I'm actually gonna remove that as well oops um, but I'll go there. And then what that's going to do is encourage these two to grow. Now, it, it, generally the one that's tallest will actually grow the fastest, so I'll actually sometimes just bend that one down so that they're kind of the same height, get them to lengthen, and then when they're about a metre long, sort of growing at roughly 45 degrees, then I will slowly bring them down to here, and then the magic happens. Each one of these nodes will want to send up a vertical, 
a vertical branch. So each one of the nodes, now we don't want that to, each one to, uh, to actually have a vertical on it. So what I normally do is go a good hand spacing from the middle. I don't want anything happening right here. And then as I go along, I'll end up with say three candlesticks on either side. Um, and then what, what you do going forward is you let those candlesticks grow up and, and basically figs fruit on the new wood. Um, and then um, each winter, I just come along and I cut them to a long candlestick um, for the, the following year. So that generates new wood and you get heaps of, heaps of fruit on it. Okay, so figs, um, if you use the candelabra method on the figs, very, very easy to do. Um, and I might actually do a little video on my one at home just so you can see one a little bit more mature. And then we come to the, um, so this is, a, this is actually a peach. But I might just take another bit off. And what we're looking to do with this is, is a, uh, an informal fan, I think is, is the way to go with these. Um, and in fact, um, this year I'm gonna just let this grow as it is. But next year, I'm actually gonna take it off here and here so that I can actually get my, the start of my big branches on the fan lower down because I want, you want as much fruit low down as you can um, because you know, if you're growing against a fence or, or whatever, you don't want it to, be, you know, to start too high up. Um, now the thing with, with this, all of the stone fruit is that um, all of the fruiting, the flowers and then the fruit happen on the new wood or the wood that grew the previous year. So if you look at this, if you look closely here, you can see that this is sort of barky looking, whereas this here is nice and it's either green or pink and smooth. Um, so that is the wood that grew in the you know, last spring and summer. And that is what's gonna produce your fruit. So um, essentially, and, and these guys are amazing because they, they really do grow very quickly. Um, so these, these will produce flowers soon and those flowers will turn into fruit and that fruit will be done before Christmas. You'll be ready to eat. And, um, and then it will continue to grow on after that. And generally, I'm in the business of, of keeping it sort of uh, in, you know, so it doesn't grow much beyond the, the, the height of my, of my fence and not going too far over here. And then as the leaves fall off in autumn, I then sort of tidy up. And what I try and do is get rid of things that are, where things cross over and uh, uh, crowd each other. Um, and also, um, I am looking very carefully to make sure that I don't cut off enough of the, you know, much of this, uh, too, or too much of the, uh, of the new wood. But it's a, it's a rookie mistake to leave too much on because you end up with heaps of flowers, heaps of little fruit, whereas you'd be better off to have um, less fruit, but be bigger and, and, and easier to manage. Um, so that's pretty much what, it, um, what you have to do for, for a simple espalier. I mean, there are very, very complicated things that you can do, but um, once you've got this kind of framework established, it's, it, it really is you know, less time than it takes to mow your lawn um, to, to actually kind of maintain the thing, because it's mostly a bit of you know, um, uh, judicious, judicious pruning, um, and, uh, and then probably the biggest task is actually picking the, picking the fruit. Um, I do protect my, my fruit from, from birds and it's so simple. If you've got a fence or a wall, a sunny fence or a wall, all I do is I have some uh, little hooks up here and then I just, I, I basically float some uh, bird net down and then on the bottom of the bird net, I tie on these, actually they're little fruit protection bags, but bags with some stones on. So it just weighs it down um, so that the, the tree is covered, but the, you know, the tree billows out. It's, you know, it's not like tight against the thing, it's just um, well contained. And I just sort of kick these 
close to the fence. So it's all nicely covered. And then when it comes to picking, so easy, you just, you know, I probably have three or four of these little bags. I pick up a couple of the bags, throw them over my shoulder, I'm inside and I pick away. Um, and things like the figs, it goes on for um, months of, of picking. So um, uh, espalier, it does look beautiful. And you know, if you, if you go online, there's some fantastic designs. Once you've got your, you know, your, your eye in, um, often you realize you know, that it's, it is actually such a beautiful art form. But it's, nevertheless, it's a very easy to execute and efficient way of actually getting lots of fruit from your, from your, your trees. Because this is a, a great way of being able to protect them from birds and possums and all the rest of it. So um, uh, a great technique, give it, a, give it a go. And remember, this month we've got 20% um, off herbs and veggies. Um, so uh, come in and see us and uh, pick your tree and I'll help you choose it. All right, see you next time.